No, you're number 35 on the act party list. I am, yes. Yeah, so it's pretty unlikely you're going to make it into Parliament, unless act does very, <laughs> very well, but based on the polls, I think. Um, so, and also, um, do you actually want to win the seat, and do you see you have a chance of winning it? Because obviously polls show that it will be either Labour or, or National who, who win the local Napier seat. Um, so w w w why are you standing? Uh, no, being realistic about it, ACT is not seriously contesting the seat. Yeah. Uh, I'm just here to fly the flag for okay. the party and to inform people about the policies. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I can get some more party votes uh, yeah. for, uh, for ACT. Okay. So we are being realistic about this okay. and uh, the voters are welcome to vote strategically, so to speak. Yeah. We are asking them for party votes. Okay. This is what will allow to make a new a real change in music. Yeah. So who should they vote for? Who do you think if they don't vote for you in the electorate vote and they give you your part, the party vote, who should they vote for in the electorate? Well, I'm not here to tell them who they should work for, yeah. vote for. Yeah. <clears throat> but obviously uh, acts policies are more aligned with national policies yeah. than any other parties. Yes. And uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, why is party voting act? I, I don't think national policies go far enough. Yeah. So I think the best way forward is to party vote act yeah. for real change yeah. uh, and vote strategically for the candidate that is closest to act and has real chances of getting yeah. through. Okay, no, that's good. And now what is your campaign strategy for the election? Are you door knocking? Do you have hoardings up? What, what are you doing? Uh, we have a great group of volunteers here in Hope yeah. Bay who are helping us with the hoardings. Yeah. Uh, just the other day, I had a phone call from the homeowner who wanted the <clears throat> act uh, hoarding put on, on their fence. Okay. Uh, that hoarding was there within half an hour, okay. so that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, myself, I'm getting engaged in public meetings. Uh, not further than this Friday, we're having a meeting about the floods. Yeah. Uh, in Hawkes Bay, that happens in Eskdale. I happen to live in Eskdale. Yeah. Uh, of course, I will be there. Uh, David Seymour is also coming to he this is. meeting, yeah, yeah. and after that there's a busy calendar of other meetings yeah. that okay. will be going ahead. Well, so generally talking to people, um, engaging with uh, the community, and there's plenty of opportunity for okay. that. Well, we'll get to the issue of the Cyclone Gabriel and the recovery and that, but just back on to the um, uh, hoardings or the billboards and that. Um, are has ACT been breaking the rules, the local rules, with putting signs up and that? And what mm. has the council contacted you? Or have, you have, have you spoken to the council about the rules for putting billboards up? No, not, not that I'm aware of. We yeah. are aware of those rules, yeah. and uh, I, I, I have no knowledge of anybody breaking those rules. Okay, all right. Now, um, elections cost quite a bit. How are you fa funding your campaign? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> acting is uh, act is funded from donations of the members, okay. and uh, all the donations go through the through the central office, okay. obviously. And uh, I'm volunteering, so I'm funding my campaign. I'm a small business owner. I yeah. work for myself, yeah. which means that I have some flexibility in dedicating the time and, yeah. and resources. Yeah. So uh, that's that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, what are the main issues you're standing on? Uh, it has to be uh, just a couple of them, but probably the top one for me is the crime. Yeah. Uh, our office is in the CBD. I, every time I walk into the office, we have a jewelry store on the corner, and uh, there's uh, full-time guards outside of that store. That is something I never thought I'd see in New Zealand. Mm. Every time we walk past, there's a guy there uh, guarding that store. Yeah. And uh, they still got dropped, unfortunately, a yeah. couple of weeks ago. So I really feel for those people. I think crime is a big issue in the CBD and in other places, also as an aftermath of the cyclone. Yeah. Another thing is the cost of living. Just, just let's stick with crime for a moment. How would you change it? What, what has been done to get it to this point? And how would you change um, or, or sort of stop, stop crime, the crime wave that's going on? Uh, Act policies uh, uh, propose to get tougher on criminals and offer real consequences. 
Yeah. So uh, what we would do, we would increase the prison capacity. Yeah. We would abolish uh, labor's target of reducing prison population. I mean, reduction in prison population in itself is a good target, but this should not be target unto itself. This should be a result of reducing crime yeah. rather than a priori assumption. Yeah. So ACT would uh, do away with that. Yeah. Uh, so criminals know that uh, they ha are facing real consequences. Yeah. And also we would reinstate the free strikes law. So okay. the entrenched criminals would know that they will uh, face prison if yeah. they keep reoffending. Yeah, okay. Now you were mentioning the cost of living crisis as well. What are you hearing and seeing from people out there on how it's affecting them? I mean, when you're a structural engineer, you work with a good cross-section of the society. Mm. You work with uh, homeowners, people who are building their first home, people who are renovating the homes they inherited. You work with landlords. And independent on who you're talking to, everybody seems to be struggling. And there's a lot of people who, are, who have their plans on hold, yeah. uh, who have sort of their lives on hold because uh, they're worried about day-to-day -day finances, which is why they're not able to plan and uh, and long-term projects, yeah. things like this. So I think there's a real social impact of the of the cost of living crisis that we have. So, so and we have Karen, Karen. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, what what Act would do about yeah. it? I mean, the, the the wage price spiral and the inflation is driven by the out of hand government spending. The government spending increased by about sixty percent uh, in the last couple of years, and the government bureaucracy was was greatly. Uh, built up, so uh, ACT would rein that in, would stop the wasteful spending, and the money that can be saved that way, this is all calculated in ACT's budget, alternative budget, yeah. uh, that could be uh, left with the society through reduced taxes in order for that money to go into productive, uh, productive work, so we can increase our efficiency. Yeah, okay. Now, um, you mentioned um that you live in Estelle. Were you affected by Cyclone Gabriel at all? Not personally. Yeah. I consider myself lucky. We yeah. have a small sleep on our lawn, but it's not really anything to speak about. Okay, yeah. And um, what do you think the government and council, uh, what do you think of the government and council response to the cyclone? Uh, well, I mean, I think we certainly need, need an inquiry. Yeah. On the day I was there, on the, on, literally on the water's edge. Uh, trying to help those people as much as, 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 as we could. Uh, what we've seen, the response was certainly chaotic, but you can't really have a big picture by being in one place. So yeah. ACT thinks that uh, we need an inquiry yeah. into the cyclone and uh, both the immediate response and the aftermath, including the increase in crime yeah. uh, in, the, in, the, in the aftermath. Okay, because you, you, you believe that um, and you've heard from people that there was lots of crime afterwards, yeah? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I was really worried. I was driving through the, through the neighborhood and uh, on, on more than one property in Puketapu, you, you, you saw the sign, you loot, I shoot, oh, which yeah. is not really something we want in the society. No. I think so. Uh, it's quite a multifaceted issue, increasing crime. Yeah. Uh, because people feel, feel venerable and... Uh, it affects the social cohesion yeah. as well. And do, you, connected. Yeah. and do you think the government's done enough in terms of helping property owners and this whole business of um, the different categories and that? Do you think that the communication around that has been smooth? I think uh, there would certainly be improvements that could mm. be done. Uh, I'm sort of at the coal face of that as a structural engineer. Yeah. So I know, I know what's going on. I think that uh, there's a lot of hard work that's being done on this, but uh, I don't think the centralized approach is an, is an answer here. So really uh, what we need is more local engagement and more local consultation and better communication with people. I think this is what's, uh, what certainly has room for improvement. And as a structural engineer, what do you have to say about how our infrastructure was and what needs to change to prevent these events happening again? Well, for quite a while now our infrastructure has been deteriorating. Mm. Uh, this is clear. 
and uh, part of the reason for that was the uh, wasteful spending and also the priorities that were not necessarily quite there when it came to uh, spending the money from local government and central government. Yeah. So the cyclone only exaggerated the issue that was already there yeah. uh, at the time. Right. And uh, I think that what we need to do is we need to uh, rework our priorities. Uh, fixing potholes is probably should be on the top of the of the spending list. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it is at the moment. Yeah. Because um, X got a policy on that because you you talking about uh, toll roads and that as a way of improving roads. Yes, that's the latest policy. Yeah. yeah private-public partnership. This is something that has been tried in many places around the world. It's known to be, to be very successful. Uh, private capital, like a uh, road, a new road, can be treated like a business. Yeah. So if you have a buy-in for private capital, you should be able to build things quicker and, and cheaper and more efficiently. Yeah. Uh, and yes, then, then charge toll for that. I think there will be market in New Zealand yeah. for this sort of thing.